What would you say was the minimum number of people you need in a group for it to be more likely than not that two of them have the same birthday? There are 366 possible birthdays and the odds need to be in favour of at least two of them sharing one. It might surprise you that the number of people we need is just 23. Birthday matches are far more probable than many people think. Ignoring February 29th and rounding the number of days in a year down to 365 for the moment, consider that when we have one person, their birthday must be unique. There's no chance of a match. Introducing a second person, only 364 days are now available, so there's slightly less chance of uniqueness because one birthday is already accounted for. Conversely, there's a slightly greater chance of a match. If we carry on calculating the changing probabilities of unique versus match birthdays as we add more people to our group, we find that when the 23rd person joins the group, the odds suddenly switch in favour of there being a match. This holds true even if we include February the 29th and round up the days of the year to 366. Calculations of probability can demonstrate that certain outcomes like matching birthdays are far more common than many people think. People can be very poor at estimating the probability of coincidental events, often ascribing mystical significance to them when they happen. Some people I know call it spooky if they meet someone with the same first name. But what many people fail to understand is that anything they have in common with a stranger is apt to be seen as somewhat remarkable. There are thousands of facts we can disclose about ourselves. First name, surname, age, number of brothers or sisters, their names and ages, and so on. The more we disclose, the more likely it becomes that matches will occur, and if a match does occur, it might impress us so much that we forget about the non-matches. Many have a similar blind spot for non-matches when it comes to so-called dream premonitions. People who dream of some event, then wake up to see a similar event happen shortly afterwards, might put this experience forward as chilling evidence of clairvoyance. But dreams are rarely only about one single event. They usually consist of dozens of events and themes, most of which are forgotten when there's one striking detail. Multiply the number of events in one single dream by the number of people dreaming across the planet, and even if the odds of rare dream coincidences were as remote as one in a million, chance alone would still allow for thousands of them to occur around the world every night. Of course, as with evolution, dreams don't operate according to chance alone. Certain characteristics of dreams make them much more likely than chance to bear resemblance to future events. For one thing, our dreams often reflect anxieties about things that happen every day. If accidents, death and disasters are common features of dreams and waking reality, it really isn't that remarkable if their occurrence in both realms sometimes coincide. Also, if you've ever had the experience of a solution to a difficult problem popping fully formed into your consciousness, you'll appreciate that our minds process a great deal of information all the time without our being aware of it. In the same way that conscious observation can often lead to accurate intelligent prediction, if subliminally perceived threats to one's safety or the safety of others are later expressed in the dreaming mind, any resulting dream might correspond fairly closely with something that ends up happening, but for quite unremarkable reasons. If I roll 20 dice, getting all sixes might seem remarkable but the probability of getting all sixes is the same as the probability of getting any sequence when we throw 20 dice. And the more dice we roll, the more probability we'll allow for a run of 20 sixes, along with all kinds of other rare permutations. This is because events that seem highly improbable in isolation become highly probable when large numbers of observations are considered. In fact, were we to assign textual characters to pairs of dice and we rolled an infinite number of dice, there'd be a very great probability at some point of spelling out the entire works of Shakespeare, though there'd be no way of predicting when this might happen. Honest dice, like honest coins, have no memory, so whatever's happened before, with every fresh throw of a die, there's always an equal one in six chance of landing on any number, something many gamblers fail to appreciate. Incidentally, contrary to the popular notion, a monkey at a typewriter wouldn't reproduce the works of Shakespeare, even if it typed for all eternity. Reproducing Shakespeare by chance requires a randomness of data that monkeys can't generate. In fact, in 2003, members of the University of Plymouth were given a £2,000 grant to test this out with six macaques in Paynton Zoo. After a month, all that the monkeys had produced was five pages featuring virtually nothing but the letter S. An important thing to understand about seemingly astonishing coincidences is that they're not specified in advance but recognised in hindsight. This makes a big difference. 
If we have a lottery in which tickets are sold for every possible combination of lottery numbers, one ticket per person, the probability that a specified person X will win is roughly 1 in 14 million. But the probability that an unspecified person Y will win is 1 in 1. That's to say someone is guaranteed to win. Winning will always be a remarkable experience for the person concerned. But those who allow themselves to become so impressed by the experience that they start to look back on their choice of lottery numbers as a result of being guided by supernatural forces are making the common mistake of confusing the remote probability of specified predictions with the high probability of unspecified results. Again, coincidences are identified after the event, not before. If you want to argue that person Y did make a prediction of coincidence, they predicted the numbers, that's fine, as long as you include the millions of failed predictions in your equation. One in so many hundred or thousand or million so-called predictions might describe future events to varying degrees of accuracy. But this is exactly what would be expected by chance. Statements of prediction are equally subject to the laws of probability. If you want to argue that paranormal forces exist because a particular prediction you heard came true, you must balance that statement with an acknowledgement of all comparable predictions that haven't come true. The crucial point is that no one has ever demonstrated clairvoyant abilities under properly controlled conditions. It's undeniable that many coincidences can seem highly odd and exotically improbable. But we're currently living on a planet of 6 billion people, Think of the dizzying variety of behaviours that you engage in as just one person. The dizzying variety of experiences you've had. The places you've been. The facts you've learned. The words you've used. The plans you've made. The dreams you've dreamed the people you've met and thought about in the course of your life, the millions of things you've seen or heard in the natural world. And you're just one person. Multiply that by six billion and you start to realise that the permutations of that incalculably vast number of experiences allow for at least a small number of the world's population to witness the most bizarre and astonishing coincidences you might imagine. What would be surprising is if they didn't occur, our need to invoke supernatural forces shrinks rapidly under the shadow of coincidence. Sometimes there are significant links between events that we observe, and the ability to detect significant correlations between events has undoubtedly been advantageous to creatures like us trying to survive on a hostile planet. The ability to identify patterns and make valid connections has no doubt been crucial to our development and so-called mastery of our environment. But when these impulses misfire or become hyperactive and we start adding inappropriate significance to rare events by saying that they must have supernatural origins, or when we resist thinking critically and carefully about the connections we make, we lose the ability to separate fact from illusion and end up wasting a lot of energy pursuing superficially seductive but ultimately false ideas that will only lead us in circles, or even into harm. Those who dismiss coincidence in favour of paranormal interpretations have rarely made an effort to understand how coincidence operates. But probability theory shows that even seemingly astonishing coincidences are far more common and likely than many people think. Before uttering the words, that couldn't just be coincidence, merely because coincidence seems implausible to you, it's important to be aware that if you haven't done your homework, fairly elementary mathematics could prove you wrong.